Well, in setting out to write um, the various movies that you've written, do you look at it in terms of the demographic that you're going for? Or, hey, if I were 18, this is what would scare me, this is what would shock me? Well, we've had the, uh, the benefit of having a love for, for horror films and watching the ones that pander versus the ones that cater and maybe surpass the expectation. And so the, that kind of general, it, it's so easy to hit the middle and it's always an unsatisfying result. Like the, the diminishing return of a sequel expectation is this endless middle that just keeps coming more and more and more until the bucks stop and then all right, they'll throw an ending on there and see how it goes. But we had a chance to make a movie here. To, we had a chance to shoot on film. We had a chance to work with the entire crew from The Walking Dead in between season one and two and stretch every dollar into a hundred. Okay, well let's make this movie like it's the last one we'll ever be able to make. This will be our tombstone and we're gonna do it with bloody satisfaction. Who cares about what anybody wants, but what we need to survive right now and be the best? That was the best way to go about it. That's what kind of charged our DNA to be a different sequel, to be a confident departure from the first movie and exist on its own. And that, that, was, that was endlessly fulfilling from a creative standpoint, from a production standpoint, and now I think the, the audience that we, we coax into the dark will get that effect as well that we get to all stand on a bull's neck when we see this movie, and that feels good. <laughs> a lot of movies that do, you know, clearly oh, are trying to go for PG-13 or whatever, some movies don't need, they're, they're PG-13 and they're fine. Like the paranormal movies don't need to be R at all, because it's just, it's that type, it's a supernatural horror movie uh, about ghosts, and it's fine, you know, it, it doesn't need to be. But uh, other ones that are, in, this, in the subgenre that this one is, which is more like serial killer type thing, right? Uh, it just feels lame. Like you're pu pulling punches just to hit a rating, and that it, that never seemed to serve uh, horror fans at all. And yeah, you might trick some 13 year old girls to go see it, but it's e instantly disposable. And so we didn't particularly want to do that. We made enough movies. Like, we, you know, this is our 10th produced movie we, that we uh, don't really need to do that. And so we didn't. We had the best of both worlds. We were able to lie to an audience in the first act and set up this teen movie that was, ah, oh, you could just see oh, it yeah, by the yeah. numbers. Sassy best friend. Ah, oh, he's the cute brother. He has a crush on the lame gal. Oh, boy, but if she would just catch that dirty boyfriend cheating, uh, and then wham, get rid of it all. We don't like the teen <laughs> movies either. Here, the adults are going to step over all the pieces of these kids and go, how the hell did we find this guy, and what are we going to do to him? That was nice, to take action movie characters and drop them into a horror movie villain scenario. Because we took everybody's skill set away and handed it right to a guy with zero tolerance. Because we were given that <laughs> note. We were given the note of like, uh, you know, what if we had a younger, sexier cast? And then, oh, we would roll our eyes. Oh, really? Come on. And they're like, well, what, uh, you know, how long do they live for? And they're like, well, we don't care. And we're like, okay, well, here's the opening, you know? <laughs> Ten minutes. And so, so we wanted, like, the horror fan who had awareness of what's in the genre to walk in and go, oh, man, they're just, oh, great. I got to follow these idiots for the next, you know, 90 minutes, blah, blah. Oh, wait, no, they're dead. Oh, wait, wait, wait what yeah. just happened? And now, all... and now you've shaken the rules to the core. Yeah. Anybody can get it. Yeah. <laughs>